And with the time at ten past twelve, that concludes the scheduled programming for today here on BBC Two. Next, programming for students of the Emopen University, starting with Unit 472, Applied Model Making. It just remains for us here to wish you a very pleasant evening. Good night. This week's lesson will be presented by Professor Tedward McSkipperton. This demonstration, the practical, will be from laboratory number two. Laboratory number two. Welcome to laboratory number two. This week we will show you how to use Chipping fluid, heavy chipping from AK Interactive. For the purposes of today's demonstration, we'll be using a box we have prepared earlier. It's a simple box representing perhaps a, a metal toolbox. We've prepared it using two colours Amig brown, red brown base. and AMIG Shadow Rust. It will become obvious later why we have painted this in the two colours. We will need a couple of items to carry out today's demonstration. An old toothbrush. A selection of pointed items such as toothpicks. Some old toothbrushes, short and stubby. And we may also need the use of a sharp craft knife. The results from today's demonstration can also be achieved by using hairspray. A simple, cheap, effective way. However, by using AK chipping fluid, this will give us a more consistent result. So we will now turn our attention to our pre-made box and prepare it for chipping. The best way to apply chipping fluid is via the airbrush. Taking the top from the bottle yes taking the top from the bottle We use enough in the cup to cover the subject. Bringing our test piece back in, we now apply two coats. The chipping fluid can be applied evenly and thickly, but not allowing too much to be applied so that the liquid does not pool on the surface of the subject. Once fully covered the item can be left to dry giving it about 20 to 25 minutes. After giving the first coat time to dry, a second coat can then be applied in the same manner. Once again using the airbrush to apply an even coat to the surface of the subject, again allowing it not to pool or run off. For those students who are studying this in their syllabus, notes relating to the chemical composition 
pH values and much more in-depth evaluation of the product will find it explained in further depth within their course notes. Coming to the end of applying the second coat, we then allow that to dry once again. The application of forced heat to the item will allow it to dry in a shorter space of time. This does not have any effect on the chipping values of the product. Once the chipping fluid has been allowed to dry, we then apply the base coat. That's the colour of the paint that one is wishing to chip. In this case, we've used a yellow for the purposes of the demonstration. Rather than use a thick paint coat, the paint is thinned slightly using an appropriate thinner or water. In this case, we've used a Vallejo sand yellow and covered the box completely. That is then allowed to dry. After the base coat has been allowed to dry, we can then begin the chipping process. Using some warm water, a pointed stick mm -hmm. and a brush, we can see by applying the water how immediately the paint starts to chip. Using a small, item, small pointed item such as a toothpick, we can work in small areas developing the chips to our desired effect. Starting small and building the chips bit by bit. Mm -hmm. We are here trying to create a natural look as though the box has been naturally chipped. Using a larger item such as a paintbrush we can apply the water and obtain a larger style of chip. We take our time and just build the chips naturally. As we can see, using a larger brush again, such as the toothbrush, the chipping fluid gives us the effect of larger chips and scuffs. We can see now the effect given by painting the box in the two colours right at the start. This gives us an effect of a rusting and we can work on this in later stages. By using the edge of the cocktail stick, we can apply scratches and scrapes to the surface of the box. It sometimes helps to do some research on the style of chipping that you want on your particular subject. Corners and edges of items will often suffer more wear and tear than other surfaces, so areas such as that can be exaggerated more.
as we move around the surface we apply more water. That reactivates the chipping fluid allowing more paint to be taken off. We can start to see now how the application of the two coloured rust colour underneath the yellow paint is now beginning to show its effect. This will be further worked on in further modules as we progress. The chipping fluid can be reactivated and chipped until the desired effect is reached. That concludes Module 1, Chipping Effects Using Chipping Fluids, using AK Interactive Heavy Chipping Fluid. Students are now reminded that their assignments are now due on this subject and they should reach their tutor no later than the second of the month. Until next time, until Module 2 when we will continue our look at weathering. Goodbye. That brings us to the end of tonight's programmes from the Emopen University. The next scheduled module in this course will be listed in your course notes. Further information can be obtained by sending a stamped self-addressed envelope to the Emopen University Department, BBC Television Centre, Wood Lane, London, W12 8QT, or calling 01811 This has been an Emopen University production sponsored by emodels.co.uk. emodels.co.uk, your one-stop shop for all your model-making needs. Once again, thank you for joining us this evening and please don't forget to switch off your set. Good night.